What's up, sugar bitches? Welcome to another episode of Crime and Cosmetics. As always, I am your host, Snacks, and today we are looking at another family annihilator. What? What do you want? What do you want from me? What? Is that what you want? Why do you do this? And Toothless, don't act like you don't like what she's doing because you get treats out of it too. Give me a second. I'll deal with you in a minute. Hold on. Um, we're looking at another family annihilator. We're looking at David Brom. I'm going to be real with you. This case is very short. There's not a lot. There's the crime and there's not a lot about David's early life. There's the crime, the trial, the sentencing, and that's about it. So I would be surprised if this video is over 20 minutes. You know, I would say, well, maybe... Honestly, yeah, I would be surprised if this video is over 20 minutes. So uh, let me feed these little mother effers and then we will get started all right so i know we're wearing purple but i kind of want to do a little green and black look like i said very short video so we're probably just gonna do the eyeshadow we'll figure it out who knows got my makeup brush got this whatever ready to go this palette mirror ready to go so let's get started february 18th 1988 in rochester minnesota olmstead county sheriff's deputies receive a call to do a welfare check at the brahms residence uh, B-R-O-M-S. I used to work at a place called Brahms when I was in high school. B-R-A-U-M-S in Oklahoma. It was the worst. So anyways, Sheriff uh, Torg uh, hold on. Sheriff Torgerson. I hope I said that name right. Sheriff Torgerson, who was a deputy at the time, was first to arrive on the scene. He arrives at the house around 5.23 p.m. He waits for his backup, which arrives at around 6 p.m. Uh, get that black on there. For some reason, I feel like lately the uh, black pigment has not been spreading well on my, my, my friggin' lid. Uh, anyways, so Sheriff's Deputy Torgan tells the arriving officer what he knows as they approach the Brom residence and they knock on the door and announce themselves. Uh, but they didn't get a response, which was very odd because it was a large family, it was evening, why wouldn't someone be home? But once they didn't get a response, Torgensen kind of knew that something might be wrong. So the two enter and they conduct a search of the Brom residence. This is where they find the bodies of the Brom family. Bernard Brom, 43, Paulette Brom, 42, Diane, who was 13, and Richard, who was 11. Now, Torgensen talks about finding, like he, in the article I read, he is basically talking about what, you know, the steps he took going through the search and like, you know, where he found the different members of the family. And he talks about finding, you know, 11 year old Richard uh, in, in bed, in the fetal position, clutching a, a little blanket with massive injuries to his head and multiple injuries across his body. Now, there were two individuals missing from the Brom family home, though. There was Joe Brom, who was 18, and David Brom, who was 16 at the time. Now, Joe did not live at home, so he wasn't much of concern, but David did. And at first, police speculated that David might have been the victim of a kidnapping, that someone had came in to the Brom residence, murdered the family, and kidnapped David. Now, as police further investigated the house, they did find the murder weapon in the basement, which was an ax that had blood all over it. Why do you do this every time I start a video? So police are kind of, you know, baffled at what is happening. This is a very small town. Things like this don't happen here. So they, again, like I said, at first believe that someone had broken in, murdered the Brom family, and had kidnapped David. Now... War Chief, are you kidding me right now? What the heck is going on? Now you're just gonna sit there and stare at me like you just didn't do, you just didn't tear apart that box. Like I support it, I like, I love it, girl boss. I want you to tear as many boxes apart as you want, but I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. So if you could just, you're about at like a six, I need you to bring it down to like a three for like 15 minutes, please. Okay, oh, nope. No, just go into that second box. Okay. Okay, thanks, girl boss. Um, okay, where was I? Like I said, so initially police thought that the Braun family had been murdered and that David had been kidnapped. Are 
you done? She's done. But that theory didn't last long. See, the original reason police were at the Brom residence is because um, David's teachers had called in for police to do a welfare check on David's family because apparently they had heard through the grapevine, uh, through the old rumor mill, that David had told a student earlier that morning that he had murdered his entire family. Apparently, that morning, David had ran into said student while she was on her way to school. He convinces her to skip school with him. She obliges. And during this little hangout says she describes to her in great detail how he murdered his family. Talk about a fucking yikes. Can you imagine being that girl, like, some dude that you, like, know and are friends with is like, hey, let's hang out. And you're like, all right, cool, I'll skip school, let's hang out. And then he just goes and tells you in vivid detailing how he murdered his family. And it's like one of those things, when you're a kid and hear something like that, you're like, you don't know, like, you, your kids like to be edgy, so you don't know if they're joking or, like, being serious. Um, but as he keeps telling you what happened, you're like, oh, this dude might be serious. Uh, I can only imagine that she was... Fucking terrified. And also, I forgot to mention, one of the things he tells this girl is that he says at one point, he hit, he says at one point he had hit his dad with an axe, he kept hitting his dad, and his dad kept getting up. Which is like, his dad had a lot of fight in him, and he just, like, kept hitting him until he died, which is... Being that girl and hearing that, like, I don't know, I, I feel like at, as kids we know when someone's joking and we know when someone's not joking, and I just, you know, like I said prior, she was probably fucking terrified. Anyways, so, basically, he tells her that him and his dad had gotten into an argument around 11.30pm, and I read in some articles that it was over, like, music that David was listening to and his dad didn't want him to listen to it. Um, from what I've read, anyways, uh, he tells her that he stayed up till around 3 a.m., and that's when he went and retrieved the axe and went to his parents' room, um, and killed his dad first and his mother, and then moved on to the rest of the family. So David's little, uh, stint of freedom did not last long. He is picked up by police the next day, uh, at a payphone near the local post office. He is then, next day, express ship straight to jail. Um, he originally enters the juvenile court system because at the time of this he was 16, but due to the severity of the case, they were like, nah, chief, you're gonna go to the adult judicial system, and that's where they send him. So during David's trial, um, during his trial, the friend I mentioned before that he had talked to while she was, or that convinced her to skip school or whatever, she testifies in court. Uh, against him. David does not testify himself. He does not take the stand. Um, he tries to enter a plea of insanity, but that does not work. And on September 16th, 1989, David is given three, count them, three consecutive life sentences, and he is currently being housed in the Minnesota Correctional Facility in Stillwater. You know what's fucking bananas? Uh, so, you know, we had originally planned to do this case, but I did the Halloween one. So one of my TikTok live, I forgot your, I did, I, I think your name was like Baby Cat or something. I'm so sorry if I didn't get that right. <clears throat> if this is you, please comment down below. Um, someone in our TikTok live, you know, and I don't know if they watch the YouTube channel because I don't recognize their username, but, uh... They were like, oh, you should cover David Brom. And I was like, that's so crazy. We're doing him next week. And she was like, yeah, my dad. She was like, her dad was like good friends with David and said that like, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me take a drink real quick. She said that the day David, like the day after, or not the day after, well, after David had murdered his family, he went to this girl's dad's house and this girl's dad gave him a haircut. And it's, and like, I like heard that. And I was like, that's fucking insane, dude. I mean, people tell me stuff like that, I'm like, ah, I'll take it with a grain of salt. But, um, in a lot of articles I read, they talk about how, like, oh, he got a haircut, you know, after he murdered his family and shaved the sides of his head and spiked up the back, blah, blah, blah. It seemed like he got some sort of, like, mullet mohawk or whatever. Um, but I was like, that's crazy, that girl's dad gave him that haircut. Um, but she talks about how, she was telling me about how, like, her dad is, like, still got PTSD from it, like, he can't watch horror movies and stuff like that, and I can only imagine, dude, you're, like, I would assume for David to go over to this dude's house and, like, for him to give them him a haircut, they had to be at least, like, pretty good friends, and for, like, one of your good friends to murder his entire family, um, that's absolutely bonkers, but, uh, like I said, very short case, this is done, we're done, I mean, we're not even at 22 minutes 
on the um, 22 minutes on my camera timer, and that's with all the pauses and everything. So it's going to be a very short video, everybody. A very, very short video, which is good because I got a lot of stuff to do today. I got emo night tonight. I got to get ready. I'm going to do a little bit of streaming beforehand. Um, so that's good. I mean, this green look is very simple. It's very nice. It's very girl boss. Not bad at all. I'll put on some eyeliner and I think we'll call it good. And good golly, Miss Molly, we're done. Um, so, I got it so high. Like, I'm getting good at just doing the line really quickly, but it's hard to figure out like how like straight and how even it is because my nose is so crooked. So it comes out like a slight slant over here, like a gradual slope, and then it just kind of like a steep slope here. Um, real, real pain in my assholes, I tell you. Uh, but that's what happens when you break your nose a whole bunch. What are you going to do about it? So, if you have any suggestions for a crew, a crew crime craze, leave them in the comments of this video. Let me zoom you out a little bit more. There we go. Nothing too crazy with this look. Nothing too crazy. Let me, uh, let's pick a mother heckin' crime for next week. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. I got a uh, little black cat in my lap, huh? Is that right, two feet? So let's see who we're going to cover next week. Like I said, if you have any, and she's gone. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below, and we will add them to the murder pot. This one. <clears throat> Excuse me. The CC's Pizza Murder. Which one of you suggested that? I don't know if I put that in there or someone suggested it. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. I put this in there because it's not a murder that happens at CC, happened at CC's Pizza. It's about a dude in uh, who lived in my town, I believe, or I can't. Uh, where what where was his home? Um, uh, I don't remember where his home was. Anyways, it doesn't matter. He owned the CC's Pizza here in Lawrence, and he owned two of them in Topeka. RIP to that CC's Pizza, it closed down. I did not realize that the dude who owned it got murdered. Uh, that's crazy, dude. Anyways, we're, that's what we're going to cover next week. Like I said, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments of this video, and we will add them to the old murder pot. I ordered a new leather jacket. Super excited about it. I'm going to customize it like the one I have now, and we're going to make a whole video of it. It's going to be a whole thing. Can't wait to take you along on that journey. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We still live stream on Twitch. We've been playing a lot of Resident Evil 2 Remastered. Come check it out there. I'll leave the links to my other social medias in this, this the description of this video. Um, I know a lot of you are from TikTok, so you already know that I go live on TikTok. Uh, podcast listeners, we have a new episode coming out. I really appreciate you guys listening to that. You got us on the Apple's uh, Top 100 improv comedy podcast charts which is bananas uh i do apologize for the technical difficulties uh the file i uploaded thursday on our usual release just was corrupted or something and wouldn't play so i re it got re-uploaded at 6 a.m the next day um i didn't realize in the middle of the vi the recording <clears throat> excuse me I had to use the bathroom and so i didn't stop the recording i was just like told i told goose i was like hey i gotta use the bathroom you know, we have a long minute of pause, so I know where to edit that out. Uh, I forgot to edit it out, and he texts me. I wake up this morning, and he's like, why is there, like, a three-minute break, three minutes of silence during, like, the minute, or, like, uh, how, I forgot. He said, like, 60 minutes into the podcast. I can't remember when it was, but I was like, oh, I forgot to edit that out. So I went back, re-uploaded the file with that version edited out. I'm sorry. There's been a lot of difficulties with this episode for some reason, but I, we will make sure to put things in place in the future so that doesn't happen thank you so much for stopping by though i will see you next week for the cc's pizza murder uh, be safe be kind to others be kind to yourself and know that you are loved you are valued you are cherished and there's always going to be a place for you here in this community and i'm so happy to have you here i will see you again soon Bye bye